out, it is here and welcome to another video. Today we are doing another short story. We are doing the second one of the collection of book three's stories. Last one was basically Stacey's and Lizzie's abduction from third book, the Clockwork Chronicles. Yep. And this one is probably to dive into Liam's perspective, if I remember correctly. But we're going to see. Why don't we get right into it? Surprise visitor. Liam was doing what he was told to do by Lizzie. She had asked him to make sure the hospital wing was running smoothly. And that someone would be there if there was an incident during the sword fighting practice. Says the older, more experienced kids were using stronger blades to practice this time. So far, everything seemed to be alright. No one had come running to him, screaming about someone being hurt. That was good, at least. <laughs> but as he sorted through some of the new things that had come in, he couldn't help but let his mind wander. He was happy here, being able to help others in the way he knew the best, but... He couldn't help but think about his brother, whom he hadn't heard from for a while. Now, there was a good reason for that, but he still missed hearing his voice. But Sam was helping Stampy. To Liam, that was a good enough excuse. Stampy needed someone he could trust after being betrayed three times from the cause. Once by Gerald, twice by a rescue party, who had retrieved Dan but left him behind in Gerald, on Gerald's orders. And the third time, by the people who had been assigned to protect him. Turning him over deliberately to Gerald, it disgusted the younger boy to think that anyone would do something like this. But they believed in the lie that Gerald had spread. Then it would no, there was no then it was no argument about it. There was no argument about it. So it seemed awfully convenient that all the betrayals Gerald, someone involved. Stampy never seemed to be getting a break from that man. It angered the boy to know that the man was still out there, looming threat on his, to his friend and his brother, who had promised to protect him. He was just glad that his brother was actually doing something. But his thoughts were suddenly interrupted when he heard a yelp of pain outside of the door. Liam looked over to see that it was open, and a wolf had slumped to the ground on the ground, weary and injured. The boy knew it wasn't just any ordinary wolf, but it was one of Stacy's five wolves. Uh, he ran over to the wolf and knelt down curiously, cautiously. The canine whimpered when the boy went to examine its injuries, before lifting it off the ground and carefully laying it on a bed. What happened to you? the boy asked quietly. Pondering whether or not Stacy had said to hear. He knew that she had always to help her own animals. The injuries didn't look as if this wolf had been in some sort of fight with an animal. The wolf whined soft, softly, anxiously trying to get up. But the boy commanded him to stop. You need to rest, boy. Don't make it harder for me to help you, okay? <laughs> Liam listened to the wolf whine as the wolf whined again. His uneasiness growing as he looked at Kanan's eyes and saw the fear. Liam knew what that wolf, what the, that the wolf was a wild animal. Something seemed different about the fear that normal, he normally experienced in animals. This was different. Something was wrong. Liam quickly banished the wolf and made sure it was comfortable, asking questions as he did so. Had something happened? Where were the other wolves? Were they hurt as well? Where was Stacy and Lizzie? But it seemed pretty evident that he needed to check out it out for himself. Stay here, okay? I'm gonna go see what I can do. But I don't want you wandering around and making those injuries worse. Wolf whined, as if he seemed to understand the boys as the boys smiled. I promise I'll be back as soon as I can. Without another word, the boy walked out of the room and outside, hesitant on whether or not he should go tell someone or not. Probably safer if he did. After all, he didn't know if there was any danger. But if his friends were hurt, he needed to be quick about it. 
The boy ran around the building until he spotted Tony, standing quietly at the edge of the forest as he went out up to him, panting for breath as he did so. Well, hello there, Liam, Tony replied cheerfully, before the tone turned into seriousness. Is there something wrong? I don't know, the boy replied. But one of Stacy's wolves came to me. He was hurt. Something might have happened. I need to check it out. All right, then let's go together, Tony said with a nod. You sure? Sam asked, Liam asked nervously. They aren't just your friends, you know, Tony said simply with a nod. Could be nothing, but Stacy's wolves don't normally go too far from her unless it's urgent. Seems pretty urgent to me, then, Liam said with unease. Something really wasn't matching up. Hopefully, they would get answers when they got there. It didn't take them long before they arrived at the cottage, and the boy froze in his tracks as he looked at what he saw. The other four wolves were, other four were, other four wolves were slowly waking up after being sprawled around in front of the cottage, seeming to have been attacked and left there. There was also a hole in front of the house, but it was eerily quiet. Stacy. Lizzie, Liam called, hoping he would hear his friends call back, wanting to hear them calling for help or anything. But all I could hear, see, were the wolves. Some of them were min with minor injuries, while others were little more wolves. I'll take care of the wolves, Tony said promise. Go look in the house. There's a chance they might still be in there. Say, this is it. Liam swallowed and nodded obediently. They went to the hold in the cottage. Into the hole. To the hole in the cottage. Ay, ay, ay. What are you doing, Grammarly? <laughs> and maneuvered around the hole. They dropped a few feet. It wouldn't hurt him, but you didn't want to fall in if you could avoid it. He made it to the cottage, to the cottage, and looked around the room, finding it eerily quiet. When he stepped into the kitchen, he could see the damage even more. The roof had appeared to have been collapsed, but there was no sign of his fence. Only a piece of paper in the middle of the room. Liam walked over and picked it up, holding it carefully in his hands as he looked at it. What do you have there? Tony's voice said, from behind Liam. Him, Liam jumped and looked over to. As his see his friend approach, Liam showed him the picture Tony found. Do you know what this is? Yeah, Liam said solemnly. It means that Mr. Hayes' men have struck again. It's a picture of the clock. A clock, just like my brother and Levi found some time ago before they were attacked. I'm afraid you're right, Tony said. The men left no other traces. Your friends have been completely disappeared. Liam swallowed and nodded. We need to let the others know about this. What about you? Tony asked the boys slowly. How are you feeling about this? Liam swallowed and shook his head, pushing back tears as shock and disbelief crashed over him. I can't believe those men would do something like this. It shouldn't have happened. We'll find them, Tony promised the boy. Trust me, somehow we'll see them again. I know it. I believe you, Liam replied. But those men are good at these kind of things. Yeah, it's not impossible to unsmart, outsmart them, Tony said with an immediate smile. Your brother has proven that plenty of times before. Liam nodded inside. I'm feeling Gerald might have something to do with it. I'm sure he does, but we'll figure this out. You'll see, Tony replied. Not like I have much of a choice, Liam replied blindly. <laughs> Tony nodded and looked around once more before he stated, We should probably get back. What about the wolves? Liam asked. And the other animals? I'll make sure the wolves have some pl a safe place to recover and wait for their owner's return, Tony promised. I told Stacy years ago that if anything did happen to her, I would look after her pack until she returned. Okay. Liam nodded. Glad to know that at least there had been some plans of what to do. Sure, he couldn't do much to help, but he had a feeling his brother would be able to figure it out if his friend was at risk. I had a feeling that Stampy was the main target in all of this. I just hoped they'd take care of it before all hope was lost. That is the end of that short story. I hope you enjoyed. 
if you did, be sure to leave a like. And, yeah. Check out any of the other stories if you haven't already. Because those are good. Yeah. Like, this is the closest thing we get to a Liam's perspective. Because originally, in the first book, there were three perspectives. But I cut off Liam's because it just ran more smoothly with just Sam and Stampy being in charge of the whole story. So, like, I missed out on what happened. It's like, you missed out on what happened on Liam's end during that time. Basically, he would. Basically, it explained. But yeah. Anyway, since there was no importance to continue it. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any thoughts, comments, or concerns, or theories, be sure to leave them in the comments. And see you in the next one. Bye!